Physics students, good afternoon. Mr. Few here. In our video today, we're going to be looking at a few problems from your review uh, for test number four. Test number four specifically is going to cover over our unit five on uniform circular motion, universal gravitation, and Kepler's laws of planetary motion. Specifically here, we're going to be looking at the first two problems on your review. Uh, so if you would like a copy of the review, uh, make sure that you check Canvas uh, for the review itself, as well as a key for the problems uh, that we're going to be going over as well. So I'll read problem number one for us, and then we will get started. This is test for review. We'll specifically be looking at problems uh, one and two here. Problem number one reads as this. Find the orbital velocity, or speed, of the moon as it goes around the Earth. Assume the distance to the moon as 3.84 times 10 to the 8 meters, and the period for orbit is 28 days. What force acts as the centripetal force in this scenario? So we're given a little bit of information here. We're told that the distance from the moon to the Earth is 3.84 times 10 to the 8 meters, and that the orbital period, or the time it takes the moon to make one orbit around the Earth, is 28 days. Now, given that we usually find things like velocity and speed in units of meters per second, one of the first things I would do here is I would convert our time period from days out to seconds, which will be a large value, but it will help us get our answer in a unit that is more appropriate for what we're looking for. Uh, so here, a time of 28 days, we can do a little bit of converting. We know that in one day, there are 24 hours. Uh, in one hour, there are 60 minutes. And in one minute, there are 60 seconds. So this is how we can make a conversion from days out to seconds. Days cancel, hours cancel, minutes cancel. So now we just multiply across by all of our conversion factors. 28 multiplied by 24, multiplied by 60, multiplied by 60. And we get a time period that is now much larger. Looks like 2,419,200 seconds. Again, very large number, but again, it's a large time expressed in a small unit. So now we have a time period in a better unit. We have a distance in a better unit. How do we take those values and get them to a velocity? Well, you might be tempted simply to take the distance over time. But remember here, we have an object, the moon, that is orbiting around the Earth in a circular path. So, in order for us to find its velocity, we can't just take distance over time because it's not traveling in a straight line. As we've talked about, we have something like this. For example, the Earth, in picture not on the scale. And then we've got the Moon, that is in orbit around the Earth. Well, uh, that Moon is traveling, we could say, around the Earth in a roughly circular pattern. So the distance it travels would be the circumference of its entire orbital path. And we can actually find the circumference uh, with a mathematical equation, 2 pi times the radius. So here, the distance from the Earth all the way out to the Moon, we could say is the radius of the Moon's orbital path. And we can actually use that radius for the total distance. Make that R a little bit better. We can make that radius. Okay? We could use that to find our circumference. And then the time period we can use in our equation for velocity of an object moving in a circle. So we have an equation that helps us relate the distance here, which would be a radius value, since it's the distance from the center of a circle out to the edge, and the time value to finding the period. And it looks like this. Now the velocity for an object moving in a circle is 2 pi r, which would be the radius of its entire circular orbit, or again, mostly circular, given the orbit of the moon around the Earth isn't a perfect circle. 2 pi r divided by the period. So here we have 2 pi multiplied by our radius, which is the distance we were given from the Earth to the moon, 3.84, I believe. Yes, times 10 to the 8 meters. Divided by our time period, and again, we probably want that in seconds. And as we've already found, 2,419,200. There we go. So now it's a matter of solving algebraically. So I'll find our numerator, 2 pi multiplied by 3.84 times 10 to the 8th power. 
divided by 2,419,200. Then we get a value just shy of 1,000, approximately 997.3 meters per second. We do a little bit of research. Uh, the value that we would probably have uh, is somewhere a little over 1,000, about 1,020, uh, maybe 1,017 uh, meters per second. But here we're getting a value that's very close to hey, what most of the researchers would say. As well, some of the numbers that we dealt with were a little bit rounded here, which means our final answer might be a little bit lower than you know, the actual measured value. But we're still getting something very close to what we need. Now the last part of question one says this. What force acts as the centripetal force in the scenario? Remember, we do have an object that is moving in a circle, which means there has to be a centripetal force or a force directed toward the center of the circle. So the moon, in order for it to orbit around the Earth, needs a force that is pushing the moon in that circular path. Remember, Newton's first law of motion says objects in motion want to stay in motion. So the moon, as it's moving, wants to move in a straight line, but there's a force pulling it in that circular path. And here, that force, as we've talked about in class, the force pulling the name on the moon would be a force of gravity from the Earth. Now, the moon also does pull on the Earth as well. Okay? However, given that the moon is a much smaller object comparatively, right, it feels the effects of that force much more than the Earth does. Again, the force from the Earth on the moon is the same in magnitude as the moon on the Earth. The main difference is the masses of the objects, okay, and that the Earth has much more inertia, therefore it doesn't move according to that force as much as the moon does. The moon is a smaller object, has less inertia, and so it's going to move a lot more than the Earth would relatively. Okay? Uh, but again, anytime we have an object moving in a circle, we need to be in the habit of asking, what is the centripetal force? Okay? So this gets us going on question number one on your repeat. Now, question number two, it reads as this. It is a three-part question. I swing a three kilogram ball horizontally on the earth at a speed of six meters per second. So this is problem two. Now we're told right off the bat, we have an object with a mass of three kilograms swinging at a velocity of six meters per second. Imagine we're just swinging something around in a circle, a bit similar to what we did uh, with lab 5A. Now, part A of question two says this. What is the tension force in the string? Assume the radius is one meter and ignore forces in the y direction. So here in part A, we're going to be looking for what is the force of tension in the string. Now, if you remember when we cover tension forces, there isn't a set equation that we have for forces of tension. However, if we have, let's say, an object that is being swung in a circle, right? Uh, like we're said here, the uh, ball is being swung, then there has to be some type of centripetal force. Now we're told that there is a ball, for example, attached to a string, and that that ball is being swung in a circle. So here, we can see that in order for that ball to move in a circle, it has to be pulled on by the string, which means our force of tension is going to be acting as our centripetal force. Remember, a centripetal force is just a force directed toward the center of a circle. So, that string okay, is acting as our centripetal force. Which means, to find the force of tension, we can use our equation for centripetal force. F sub t, in this scenario, will equal mv squared over r. Now again, it's important to emphasize, tension forces will not always be our centripetal force. Think about example number one, right? Okay. In that scenario, it was a force of gravity that was our centripetal force. Okay. Centripetal forces, they are just a way of describing forces we've already talked about that are directed toward the center of a circle. As we've seen in class, we can have okay, normal forces that act as our centripetal force, forces of friction that act as our centripetal force, right? forces of gravity. Lots of forces can be a centripetal force. They just have to be directed toward the center of a circle. So now we have a quite a bit of information that we can use to find our force of tension. So F sub t will equal uh, the mass of our object, which was three kilograms, multiplied by its velocity, six meters per second, squared, divided by the radius of our circle, which we are told is one meter. So uh, three, uh, we've got six squared, so 36. So three multiplied by 36, divided by one, should give us 108 newtons. 
I thought we would solve part A, looking for the force of tension. Now, part B says this. Determine the tension force if I change the radius to 0.4 meters, but kept the velocity at 6 meters per second. So what would happen now, it's in a slightly different color. What would happen now to our force of tension if we changed the radius of our circle, we made it smaller, okay, but kept the velocity at the same rate, 6 meters per second. So now we're still going to set our force of tension equal to our centripetal force because of its direction. And F sub t will equal mv squared over r. So we have again a mass of 3 kilograms. That is not changing. A velocity of 6 meters per second. That is not changing. And our velocity is squared in our equation for centripetal force. Now we have a radius of 0 0.4 meters. Now, as you might be able to tell, in this setup, our numerator is not changing. Mass of 3, velocity of 6. What is changing is our radius. Okay? So, if we have a smaller denominator, that means our overall force value should go up. So here we go, 3 times 6 squared, divided by 0.4, we end up getting 270, that is a force. So newtons will be the unit that we use. So now, if we keep the parameters the same, mass and velocity, but lower the radius, that means there is more force involved keeping that object spinning in a circle. Which, as you can imagine, if we have a big radius swinging our ball, and then a small radius swinging our ball, we might have to pull a little bit tighter right, in that smaller uh, radius circle. So this is how we would set up and solve part B on question two. Lastly, part C says this. Determine the tension force if I change the speed to 3 meters per second, but keep the radius at 1 meter. So now lastly, what we'll do here is we will find the force of tension one last time, but at a different velocity. So again, we'll have our force of tension equal to our centripetal force because of its direction. The mass of our object is not changing, 3 kilograms. Our velocity we're now lowering down to 3 meters per second. Remember velocity is squared. And now we are returning the radius back to its original value of 1 meter. So if we compare part C back to part A, we should notice that the value that changes most notably is the velocity. Velocity is going down, and since velocity is in the numerator of our equation, it should have a direct effect on our force. So a lower velocity should mean we have a lower value for our force of tension, which acts as our centripetal force. So 3 times 3 squared, which is 9, divided by 1, gives us a value of 27 newtons. So hey, that value is lower than part A, which is what we predicted that it should be. So here, this is a very basic application of what we've learned about with centripetal forces. And oftentimes, we have to make sure we're asking which force acts as the centripetal force. Remember, we don't have an equation for tension forces. But in this scenario, we do know tension acts as our centripetal force, so we can use that relationship to find what we're looking for. Okay? Hopefully this gets us moving in the right direction for questions one and two. As always, make sure that you ask questions if you're having them, and that you check the keys and resources that are available. Good luck.